Tim Higgins, Wall Street Journal reporter and a CNBC contributor. Hey, Tim, how, how, we're glad morning. you're not here in the studio. Uh, we're getting attacked. Um, you, you heard that report. Did, did you saw those emails. What, did, did your eyebrow, one of them go up, both of them? Yeah, you know, Detroit executives are what? Frustrated, flummoxed. We could continue the alliteration, but this is kind of part of the negotiating process, right? What's really probably more frustrating is that there's not uh, predictability here. Not that negotiations are predictable, but over the course of UAW talks in the last generation, there has been kind of a pattern. There has been kind of predictable things. They start with a handshake, they progress, uh, they get down to the wire. And what Sean Fain has done here is thrown out the playbook. And that is perhaps part of his strength and perhaps something that the Detroit automakers really didn't appreciate uh, fully until now. Any progress? So how, what happens at noon? How widespread could it be? What are you expecting? To what, what, yeah. it, nobody knows, but. Right. I mean, at this point, it looks as if the, the strike will be extended. What I'm looking for is kind of exactly what factories they're going to be striking. Uh, so far, uh, the kind of the UAW has been picking uh, factories that aren't huge hits to the company's bottom line. Uh, we're talking about kind of mid-sized pickup trucks. Deutsche Bank out yesterday with an analysis saying that maybe the hit is around 50 million EBIT so far, which really, uh, to each company, which isn't really a lot. It could be a lot over time. But if the UAW starts going after stuff like the F-150 at Ford, the real moneymaker, Escalade nice. at GM, then it starts to get personal. It starts to get real painful. I just, I can't uh, think of a real positive outcome for, for what happens with all this. And because... I guess because I'm just worried about the big three's future again, given all the uh, the constraints that they're going to be under and, and the very difficult transition to, to, to EVs and, and how it's going so far. And, uh, you know, Tesla's possible competitive advantage. And I, if I were a, a worker and I saw how much subsidies were, were being doled out in the IRA, I'd want my piece too. Look, if the government's printing money uh, to make this transition, where's my, where's my part? But it doesn't work well uh, in, in terms of making it a, a, a profitable endeavor in the United States. Well, you're, you're hitting at this challenge here. This is one of the frustrations of the workers. You know, it does seem that perhaps the Detroit automakers didn't appreciate fully the frustration in the rank and file class, not just frustration uh, with their wages, frustration with the, the change, the structural change that's going on to the economy and to the industry, but also, you know, frustration that that rank and file has had with its previous UAW leadership, uh, which has uh, seen some fraud issues in recent years. And Sean Fain came in on that anger and has really, in some ways, used it to his advantage to rally the troops going forward and now has them, in a lot of ways, whipped up, wanting something big, wanting uh, to a contract that really is kind of changing for their lives. And that's uh, you know, got Detroit executives very nervous because they're looking at that bottom line and they're looking at the cost of that transition as the likes of Tesla really try to eat their lunch in the EV future.